The global reset is on and popping. In this video, I'm going to give you some tactics, some tips, some tricks, some things that you can do to prevent yourself from being globally reset. All right, boys and girls, we're going to talk about tactics that you can deploy so you don't get globally reset. About to give you some strategies, about to tell you some of the stuff that I'm doing. Okay, guys, we're about to get into tactics and strategies to prep ourselves for the global reset. And I'm gonna tell you some of the things that I am doing. What's up, gang? So we're gonna talk about things that you can do to present, to prevent yourself from being globally reset. Now, there's a lot that's gonna be in this, so take notes, pay attention. Number one, let's talk about for you folks who are in school. If you're in college and you made a bad choice on your degree, it's gonna cost you. Because if you got, let me, let me put it to you this way. If you're in STEM, IT, computer data science, that type of stuff. Well, let me put it to you this way. You, if you're in a good position, you will have multiple job offers before you graduate. They will be looking for you. And I'm talking about six figure jobs. They will be looking for you. If you're in that situation, you're not gonna be globally reset. You don't have to worry about it. However, if you're in college and you're gonna graduate within the next two years, you need to start looking at your major. You need to get rid of these soft, easy BS degrees. If you're on that pathway, if you go ahead and get a BS degree, uh, like something like sociology or something like some simple degree and where no one is looking for you when you're about to graduate you're you could get, come out of college and be globally reset you could come out of college and be globally reset so uh, i don't want that to happen to you so if you're like two years away from graduation you really need to look at getting a harder a tougher degree so that's for the folks in college, for my young folks. Typically, the decision you made two to four years ago is gonna have a great impact on whether or not you will be globally reset. And yes, there will be people with college degrees who will be globally reset because they don't have a degree that no one's looking for. All right, let's talk about credit. Credit is still going to be important for people. And I recently just applied for a few credit cards just to see what would happen, and I got every one of them. So what you want to do, and hear me and hear me now, you want to get rid of as much of your bad debt. Now, what is bad debt? Car payments are bad debt. Credit card payments for buying that Gucci belt, that's bad debt. Credit card payments for that vacation where you went down to Cancun with the girls and you ran your credit card up to 5,000. That's bad debt. You do not want to enter the global reset with bad debt. It could cost you. And during the global reset, there will be people able to get HELOCs, credit cards, car loans, and mortgages. But these people are gonna have 720 credit scores. So it is gonna be imperative for you if you have bad credit to fix your credit because during the global reset, there will be amazing opportunities for you to buy assets, to get your paws on some assets, to actually level up there will be opportunities and if you're a person who doesn't have cash 
and most people don't have cash, and I'm about to address that in a minute. Um, having little to no debt and access to credit can potentially open up the door for you to double your net worth or even triple your net worth during the global reset. This is gonna be a serious opportunity. And this is one of the reasons that I am opening up a credit repair agency because it's gonna be much needed. It's gonna be super, super lucrative in my opinion in the next five to 10 years because there's gonna be so many people whose credit got trashed during the pandemic. Also, during the global reset, my dudes, let's have a conversation. You want to be very careful who you slide your dick up in. Right now, once again, with the global reset, like I said, there's a group of people coming up and there's a lot of people going down, right? Women, women are going to get hit so hard by this global reset. Women who have been relying on their looks, relying on female privilege. The global reset ain't gonna give a damn. I don't, the global reset's not gonna care how pretty you are. It's not gonna care how tight your titties are. It ain't gonna care. So fellas, during this great shift, uh, you gotta be careful to align yourself with someone worthy of your time and attention. And I know during the global reset, there are going to be some bad bitches who are going to be coming down and they're going to be looking for zaddy. They're going to want zaddy. And you could potentially be zaddy, but you need to keep your head on the swivel and you need to keep your wits about yourself because if you align yourself with the wrong woman, and I'm going to give you a, a great case of this, uh, it could cost you during this global reset. I have a friend and my friend fell for a woman who was a single mother of not one, not two, but three kids. And my friend is doing well. And before you know it, this single mother and her three kids moved into his house. And it was cool the first two years first two years then of her three children the oldest was a 16 year old female and this female said that my friend molested her okay I know my friend well I don't think he molested this chick but this is what happened my friend had to leave his house the house that he had before he met this woman, and that woman and her three children were living in his house, and he had to leave. So he still got to pay the mortgage. He still got to keep the utilities while they're living in his house. Now, they've gone to court, and there was no evidence, so you think my friend could move back in the house. Nope, 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 nope. Because he formally recognized her as his wife. Facebook post, he called her his wife even though they were not married. She gets to stay in the house with her three kids. And he, he could move in because he owns the house, but it's going to be a weird situation. Because after going to court and all this other stuff, he's like, he's talking to me because right now he's renting an apartment and he owns a house. I'm just saying that's a worst case scenario. But guys, you got to be really, really careful about because, you know, she's super cute. The daughter looks just like her. The daughter is a younger, fitter, tighter, firmer version of the mom. So that's why a lot of people believe. But once they went to court, and uh, essentially, he's having a hard time getting this woman and her three kids out of his house. 
So at some point, they will leave. But right now, he's going through it. During the global reset, my dudes, and to a degree, my women, if you are financially viable, remember my video, the hobosexuals are coming for you. If you're financially viable, you will be a target because we're going to have a bunch of people going down. We're going to have pretty women. We're going to have hot dudes. We're going to have dudes with six packs. Erica Williams, they're going to be, they're going to be looking for you. They're going to be looking for you because they're going to be looking for a nice warm bed to lay their heads. So during this global reset, which I predict to last for the next five to 10 years, you, if you're economically viable, if you're a man or woman that has your own place, have your own cars, you're financially stable, you will become a target. So keep your wits about yourself. I know he got that six pack. You run your fingers across those, those solid abs that turns you on. I know her titties are tight. But you got to understand that people will be desperate. So keep your head on the swivel, keep your wits about yourself, and align yourself with someone who is of like-minded attributes. Because during this pandemic, today, I saw another homeless people. You're going to see a big, big shift of people who are going down, who are going down. To my Airbnb host, you may want to lower, consider lowering your rents and moving to long-term rentals. During this big shift, you're going to have a lot of people who are not going to be able to qualify for an apartment or a house. They're not going to be able to qualify. Big example are these gig workers. People who drive for Uber, who drive for Lyft they are not going to be able to qualify for an apartment because many of them don't have their business set up correctly. They don't have an LLC. They're not paying themselves a salary. They don't have the paperwork to get an apartment, to get a house. So I feel for the smart Airbnb host that this is going to be a boom period. Now, if you got a high-end Airbnb rental, I feel that you, you may suffer. But if you got like a regular house, like let's say you have a duplex and your duplex is in the hood. I would like market my duplex to gig workers and people who are working but don't have the qualifications for a rental, uh, to rent an apartment or to rent a house. So one of the things that you need to do, and this is some of the stuff that I'm doing, like I know I've had, I've saw the comments, like I should keep the house. Uh, one, one of the reasons I'm not keeping the house is I don't use the house. I pretty much just hang out on the main level. And I have a firm policy of not having things in my life that I don't use. That's just me. So I'm getting rid of this house because it is indefensible. It is like literally, I could be in the bedroom and I have an entry point here. I got an entry point back there. I'm just like, this house would be hella hard to defend in, in the case of a home invasion. It would be, it's just, that's one of the reasons I'm getting out of here. I've been thinking about this for a minute. I've been thinking about, okay, what would I do if someone tried to, you know, let's, let's say we had to purge and people like, this is all glass. I mean, there are so many weak points to this house. It's a great house. It's a lovely house. It's a house that was built for architectural design with no regard to home security whatsoever. I have a shotgun. I have an assault rifle. I've got three pistols. I can hold up in the bedroom, but there ain't no way for me to get out. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, I, I didn't like that. So one of the things I'm doing is getting rid of the house and I am going to move to a more secure location because I feel that crime will continue to escalate. Like once again, every day I, I'm like watching, I'm just sitting here looking, I'm seeing more and more homeless people. I'm seeing uh, like I posted this home invasion. This happened in my neighborhood. 
This, someone broke into this woman's 11,000 square foot house, put a gun to her head, and had her and her daughter terrified for their lives. I feel that that's going to be a norm. I feel that that's going to be normal. Like in South America and Mexico, kidnappings are normal. They will kidnap someone, cut off their finger, and um, send it to their family and to get money. So we may actually experience kidnappings. I'm serious. And this is one of the reasons that I am getting out of this house because I'm getting rid of like, you know, you will not see any more receipts from Glendon Cameron. No more receipts, um, no more proof. I, if you don't believe them, hey, I'm just gonna have to roll like everyone else because I realized I was making myself a target and a big target. I was just putting a big bullseye on, on the back of my back. So that's gone. I'm getting rid of that, stopping all that. And another thing that I'm doing in my personal name, I have this car. I have that car debt, which I may pay off next month. I might. Uh, but once again, I am bunkering down on my personal credit. Uh, I've got like half a million dollars in personal credit and I have no balances and I feel during the Great Reset, you're going to see a lot of people's credit accounts get closed. And I'm talking about people with good credit. There are people like me who have a lot of credit cards that they're not using. And the banks, once the reset start really, really rolling, banks are going to get spooked. And they're going to start shutting down credit cards. They're going to start cramming down limits. So what you need to do, if you have good credit, you need to get even more credit. Uh, the banks are gonna like be looking at your older credit cards. They're not gonna be looking at your new credit cards. I just applied for five credit cards last night and got them. So what you wanna do is to sure up your credit so if they do close your credit card, like once again, this will have nothing to do on your credit worthiness. This would be because the banks will get spooked and they will look at your credit profile and like, I mean, seriously, if Wells Fargo or Chase looked at my credit profile, it's like, he's got half a million dollars in credit cards? He can get into a half a million dollars of trouble. So I'm just buttressing, I'm, I'm solidifying my credit profile. I'm gonna routinely, in six months, I'm gonna do it again. So if you have good credit, you wanna maintain your good credit because, uh, my goal is to turn my personal credit into corporate credit or business credit. So I am being very, 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 very careful with my credit. Very careful with my credit. I will not use my credit to take a trip. I will not use my credit to buy toys. I will not use my credit because essentially at the end of the day, I feel that you know, there's good credit, there's good debt, and there's bad debt. Bad debt is any debt that you got for pleasure, or you bought a car, or you did something stupid. Good debt is debt on assets that produce revenue. So I'm looking, I'm, I'm re-exploring some stuff. I, I will be talking about some other things that I'm getting ready to do. So I'm looking for a security standpoint, I'm getting out of this house, I'm looking from a credit standpoint, I'm tightening up my credit, I'm getting even more credit. And also, let's say your name is Maurice. And Maurice, you are a solid dude, you got a good job, you have no debt, your car is paid off, you live by yourself. Ho hobosexual bait, hobosexual bait, you're a hobosexual bait. Remember what I said, and what you want to do is keep your jobs. All right, let's have this conversation. Right now is the great resignation. All these people, and to me, these folks are silly. They're quitting their jobs because they don't feel that they were treated right. But they don't have a game plan. Do not be one of these silly people quitting your job. If 
anything. And I have a friend who's doing this. She builds uh, health records. She does the informatics for a hospital. And she has figured out how to do her job. See, this is one of the things if you are a knowledge worker. If you are a knowledge worker, you can figure out, and she makes $140,000 a year from one job. You can figure out how to do your job as quickly and efficiently as possible. <laughs> possible. She's figured out how to get all the work she needs to do to keep her job done within two to three hours a day. And actually she's more productive than most of her peers because she's figured out a system of working and getting her stuff done. Then I was like, you know, you were looking for some more capital, why don't you get you another car? So she's got two corporate jobs. She has two six-figure jobs, two six-figure jobs. And she ain't even using all the money from her first job. So her second job income, it goes in the bank for investment purposes. So if Maurice, if you're in that situation where you're a knowledge worker, you need to get a second job. This is not the time to be examining the lint in your navel. It's like, I'm resigning my job because I want to be happy. And I want to, this ain't, this ain't the time to be doing that. There are many people who left their jobs. They're going to figure it out that they made a big mistake because essentially there's a social movement of people. Because once again, during the pandemic, people got used to working at home, being at home, making money at home. The foreclosure man stopped foreclosing. The repo man stopped repoing. The eviction man stopped evicting. So people, once again, luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. So these people want to have that type of life, even though they don't have the skill sets or the asset base to have those lives, but they, they, that's why I call them foolish because they don't know what they're doing. But this is the time for you to get it. If you can get a second job, if you can make more money, this is the time to do it during this reset because there are a lot of six figure jobs that cannot be filled because people don't have the qualifications. And if you got the qualifications, you can work out a deal where maybe it's like, hey, I could give you 20 hours a week. A lot of these companies are desperate. They'll take you up on your offer. So this is the time if you, Maurice, for you to get a second job. This is the time for you to build a side business. This is the time for you to stack up. Uh, I'm going to start a credit repair agency. I got my car rental agency. I got my YouTube business. I got my online course business and my consulting business. And by December, I'm going to figure out something else I can do. Because during this global reset, what's going to happen right now, real estate, I don't think real estate's ever going to crash like it did in 2008. I don't think that's going to happen. I do feel that real estate, what I, let, let, let's go ahead and have this conversation. What I feel in uh, real estate is there's going to be opportunities for people with cash and there are going to be opportunities for people with amazing credit. And these opportunities are going to be kind of hidden in the mix, so to speak. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's say, let's fast forward three years in the future is 2024 and you your neighbor has a house that you know is worth 450,000 but and this is why wholesaling is so big so many people do not maintain nor update their houses because they don't have the money so your neighbor because you know your neighbor and you know what this house could be worth but let's say you can get this house for 200 and it's worth 450 fixed up. You can get it for 200, put 50, maybe 70,000 in it and then flip it. 
these opportunities are going to be everywhere. They're going to be everywhere because in two to three years, this is what's going to happen. The great forbearance, these houses are going to start hitting the market. You know, in about three years, we get to the point where they're going to start foreclosing. This is going to create deals. This is going to create opportunities for people who have cash or amazing credit. You can't have just good credit. You can't be like at a 650. You're going to have to be at the 720, 750, you know, preferably 750 to 770. That's where you want to be. And there's going to be so many opportunities. Why? Because there are going to be so many people with bad and trashed credit. They won't be able to rent an apartment. They won't be able to buy a car. They won't be able to, they won't even be able to do a credit check for a cell phone or cable. Their credit's going to be that terrible. So in this environment, he who has the gold makes the rules. That's the golden rule. So if you got yourself some cash, if you've got yourself set up, if you're situated, because once again, I'm starting to stack cash again. I'm not buying any more rental cars. I've completely, I'll do a separate video about that. I've changed my whole rental car uh, business model. I'm not buying any more cars this whole year. I'm just stacking cash. I'm stacking cash. I'm maintaining my credit because the opportunities that are going to come. Many of you have asked me about buying a business. If you have credit or you have cash, you're gonna be able to buy business in the future for the cheap. There are gonna be businesses for sale. There are gonna be houses for sales. There are gonna be cars for sale. There's gonna be equipment for sale. There's gonna, like, seriously, during this global reset, there's gonna be so many things for sale, but they're gonna be for sale for people who can afford to buy. This is why I'm stacking cash again. I'm stacking cash again. I'm getting my credit. So I will have cash and I will have great credit. And I'm prepping for the opportunities that are going to unfold. I assume because in 2022, 2022, I think 2022 is going to be the same as 2021. But 2023, 2024, 2025, because right now the stimulus money is leaving the economy. And we've got a few more areas where that stimulus money needs to come out of the economy. And then we're going to see the real economy, the real economy and the real economy. Like, man, it, it, it's like, I don't want to see anyone suffer, but I'm like over here rubbing my hands together because I know all of the juicy deals that are going to be on the table. And, there are going to be so many deals, so many deals, so many things are going to be available and there's going to be so many opportunities. So you should be thinking seriously about getting a second job or building a business. You should be doing that. You should be mentally there because you're going to need some cash. You're going to need some, you're going to need some cash. You're going to need some good credit. But I feel that the opportunities are going to be mind blowing mind-blowing and I feel during this global reset with so many people coming down that this is going to push crypto to an all-time high and I'm gonna say this right now I feel that the reason that crypto has surged is because people are scared and desperate so add more scared and desperate people to the mix I feel that crypto is going to explode how do I know this? I'm going to tell you a story. There was a point in my life I was financially desperate. I was financially illiterate. And this thing that entered my head, I felt that God wanted me to win the lottery. So I went and bought a bunch of scratch offs. I had 200 bucks and I went and bought $200 worth of scratch up tickets. I was desperate. I was stupid. I lost $80. I won 120. So I spent 200 and I got 120 back. Guess what I did? Cause I was desperate. I went back and bought some more scratch offs. Cause I'm like, God, Jesus Christ, my Lord and savior, 
he got me. He got me, right? And I spent 120. And I won 40. So <laughs> I lost all my money, just about. Then I went back and I rolled the dice again with the 40. And it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. And that's why I feel that so many people are going to pile into crypto because the desperation, the pain, it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. And once again, um, I feel that if you're prepared, the opportunities are going to be ridiculous. Because, you know, like, you know, people's like, hey, don't sell that house, keep that house. I ain't even worried about this house. I made more money in a year than what this house is worth. I ain't even worried about this house. Uh, let me go ahead and kind of give you a sneak preview into my mindset. I don't know how, I, I have a feeling I'm gonna like this high rise living. If I like it, I'm just gonna stay there forever. And then what I'm going to do during the global reset is I'm gonna be able to get some deals on either commercial property or residential property. And I'm gonna buy these deals. I will have, I will probably own multiple properties and I'll be renting. And these properties will be paying my rent. Because you know, I'm looking at it from a different point of view. Because for me, my investments are my business. So I don't have to invest in the stock market. I don't have to invest in real estate but I will choose to move some of this business revenue and income into businesses. And for you guys in the corporate papers, just wait until tax season. I got so much game for you guys, it's gonna literally blow your mind. Uh, so once again, go ahead, get in the corporate papers. I've not changed anything because, you know, I've had people come to me and I got to get the challenges and stuff together. Link is below. But guys, this is what you need to do right now. You got time to, you know, well, well let me let me back up from that. Depending on where you are, if you're if your name is Maurice or Ed or John and you got a good job, you live by yourself, you're not struggling, you got time to prepare for the, corp, the, the global reset. But if you're already homeless, living in a hotel, driving for Uber, uh, renting a car day by day, uh, you're going to have to push so hard to get out of your normal trajectory, which is very bad right now, to stabilize so you can take advantage of the global reset. Take advantage of the global reset because, guys, this is coming. Well, it ain't coming. It's here. The global reset is here. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse for the people who are on the fringes of society. Going back to the Sugar Baby Index, I looked at the site this morning. Literally, you know, two years ago, it was nothing but girls from 18 to 22. 18 to 22 made up 90% of the site. There was a speckle of 25. There was a few 36 year olds, right? Today, I did some ratios. 70% of the women on the Sugar Baby websites are over 30. This happened in two years, two years. So this is a sign, this is a sign just like with my car rental business. I woke up and I had 10 people late. This is a sign that the economy is not deteriorating. That would be the wrong word. It's resetting back to normal because of the pandemic. We had hyper segmentation. We had segments that went crazy. Amazon.com went crazy. Uh, DoorDash went crazy. Uber, Lyft went crazy. My business went crazy. Hyper segmentation. And now the hyper segmentation is gone and we're moving back to a normal, more, the normal economy. The hyper, segment, the hyper segmentation money is gone. 
And now we're dealing with the real economy money because this is one of the reasons that I live so well within my income because my income can, you know, it, uh, dramatically change. I mean, I was doing like 330, 330 a month last year. Now I'm back to like 100, 120 a month. Now, that's a big change, but because I never lived to the top of my income, I didn't even notice it from a day-to-day -day living expenses because all of this, this car, that car, that car, the house, uh, I can I can do that on five G's a month. So it takes me five because once again, these car most of these cars are paid for except that car. And once I get that paid for, then I can I can ball out on four, five G's a month. I can live you know more than likely I'm going to raise it to seven G's. But this is one of the things that you got to do is live well within your means to give you ammunition to fire at the global reset you cannot be playing around during this global reset every day i see a new homeless person in sandy springs every day i have lived here for 12 years there was two for 12 years it was a a little a lady she would talk to herself and it was this guy and he would just stare at you he would never, and they never asked for money. And people just gave him money and took care of him. So right now, the global reset is on and popping. And if you are in the, in the danger zone, if you are out here, you know, you're living above your means, you're living on credit, you're in trouble. You're in trouble and you don't even know it. And the global reset will reveal your bad hand. It will reveal where you are. It will, it will, it will just knock you upside your head. So this is some of the stuff that I'm doing. I'm starting more companies. I'm tightening up my credit. My credit is already excellent. I'm making it even more excellent. I'm stacking cash, stacking cash. And this is one of the things that I am doing to fortify myself for the global reset because there will be so many opportunities. There were these in like 2022, I don't think the opportunities are gonna start popping the way that they will pop in 2023 and 2024 and 2025. That's how I feel that these opportunities are gonna start popping. I think that's when they're gonna pop. <laughs> How you doing? Right. You in the middle. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Have a good day, man. Oh, cool. I know what these are. Just got a delivery. <laughs> More stuff that I'm working on. Um, I'm also something else I'm doing. This weekend, I'm going through my house and I am getting rid of clothing. I'm getting rid of. Um, anything I don't need. I'm giving a lot of stuff away. I'm just, I'm making myself light as possible. Uh, I was in the military. If you ever see a ranger or a seal, they're not the biggest or the most muscled people. They're not. Rangers, you know, you might see a tall ranger, but they all are kind of skinny. And you see a seal, they're all type of skinny. You want to know why they're built like that? So they can make moves, so they can be nimble. And I'm making myself ranger seal ready. I'm getting rid of stuff I don't need. I'm lightening up stuff. I'm probably going to donate $5,000 worth of stuff to Goodwill. Write that off on my taxes. And I am prepping myself to be able to take advantage of these opportunities that are going to just start dropping. The opportunities are going to be sick. The opportunities are going to be massive. I've got camera equipment that I'm going to sell. I've got all types of things that I am working on to prep myself for the next 10 years. This global reset is the opportunity of a lifetime for people who are prepared. But if you're not prepared, you're gonna get reset. Just It's just what's gonna happen. You're gonna get reset 
you're going to go from living in the house or an apartment to living in a room or worst case scenario you will be homeless or living in your car and it's just going to be sad it's just going to be sad hopefully you guys heard me let me know what your comments are i will see you guys in the next one you can go below get into the corporate papers we got a lot of stuff that's coming the rest of the year you don't want to miss it and you can still get in for that discount so with that I will talk to you guys later.